Tonight, another plea from the father of a missing baby and his fiance, please bring them home. On Thursday, Heidi Broussard disappeared after dropping off her fiance's son at Cowan Elementary School in Southwest Austin. She was with her now three week old baby girl, Margot. And now the baby's father, Broussard's fiance, is speaking out. He says Broussard would never leave on her own and believes someone took her and the baby. Good afternoon and welcome to True Crime Mysteries. If you're new to the channel, hello and welcome, and if you're returning, welcome back. Today we are discussing the disturbing murder of Heidi Broussard and the kidnapping of her two-week-old daughter perpetrated by her best friend. Let's get into it. This was a case I came across while working on a Crimes of the Month video, and it just was too large of a case to fit there, so we're doing a standalone video. The person who committed this crime has been arrested and they've been going through the courts at a very slow pace, and we've only seen a few pre-trial motions so far, but based on the evidence, it is very undeniable who did this. So we are waiting for the trial to go on, and we'll kind of see where that goes from there. On December 12th, 2019, 33-year-old Heidi Broussard dropped off her six-year-old son at his elementary school in Austin, Texas at around 7.30 a.m. Heidi had her two-week-old newborn, baby Margot, with her at the time. Heidi's partner, Shane, had returned home from work and had been surprised that he couldn't find Heidi in their apartment, despite her car being parked in the normal space, her purse and all of her personal belongings, which also included the diaper bag for the newborn, were all in the apartment still. The only item that Shane noticed missing was Heidi's cell phone. Shane knew something was off about the situation. He picked up their son at after school care, and when he picked up his son, he asked his staff there for his daughter too, and immediately knew something was wrong. They didn't have Margot. She was still too young for daycare and wasn't due to start for several more weeks. It was at that point that Shane called the police to report his wife and daughter missing, and an extensive investigation began. I'm a detective with the Austin Police Department Violent Crimes Unit. Uh, today I want to provide an update on the current state of our search for Heidi uh, Broussard and Margot Carey. Um, I'll reiterate their, their descriptions. Heidi is a 30 Three-year-old white female, she stands five foot three, 150 pounds. She has dark hair with highlights in it. And Margot is now a three-week-old child. Her last doctor's appointment, she was seven pounds, seven ounces, and 22 inches long. Heidi and Margot were last seen on Thursday, December 12th, here in Austin, Texas. Uh, it's believed that Heidi and Margot's last known location was at their apartment complex in the area of William Cannon and South First and we believe them to be there sometime in the morning of that Thursday, December 12th. Uh, Heidi and Margo reported missing to us, to the Austin Police Department, at approximately 7.30 that night on Thursday. Patrol went to the scene, conducted an initial investigation, and contacted detectives with the Austin Police Department. Since that moment, we've been working this case continually. Um, we have as for the help of the FBI, the FBI is sending in the CARD team, that's the Child Abduction Response Deployment Team, here to Austin to assist with this investigation and with this search uh, for Heidi and for Margot. Uh, throughout this investigation, we've had the assistance of a number of units, both locally, statewide, and nationally, including the Austin Police Department Missing Persons Unit, the Austin Police Department Special Investigations Unit, the Texas Department of Public Safety, the Texas Rangers, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Travis County Search and Rescue Team, as well as the Texas Parks and Wildlife. And those units have continued to support us and uh, continue to support us as we move on with this investigation 
and our search for Heidi and Margot. Uh, I want to thank the community for tips that we've received in this case. We've received numerous tips um, from all different mediums and all different uh, sources. We ask that those tips that are made be reported to the Austin Police Department. We've seen a lot of tips that are posted online and with those tips we may not find them. We're aware of a lot of a lot of Facebook pages, a lot of um, online channels where people are posting comments that may be relevant to our investigation. We ask that you also share those with the Austin Police Department. Um, our resources, we're, we're doing our best to keep up with the number of, of posts and number of tips that are, are being posted online, but we ask that you contact us, the Austin Police Department at area code 512-974-5250. With any tips, um, if you see Heidi or Margot, please contact the Austin Police Department or your local law enforcement agency if you see them uh, out and about. We continue to search. We've been working continually since Thursday night uh, to try and find Heidi and Margot. Shane made this plea to the media for the safe return of his wife and child. Or put her somewhere safe. Uh, heard the baby. <laughs> Feed the baby. She's only three weeks old. So, just find a way. You're, you won't be in trouble. Just drop her off. She has a beautiful family. Shane Carey says the last time he spoke to Broussard on Thursday, she told him she had just bought these three books at their son's school at the book fair. Broussard's purse and the baby's bag were still at the apartment when he got home from work. She never picked up their son from school. Carey says the only thing missing now is her phone, and it's been turned off since Thursday. So far, Austin police have remained tight-lipped about their investigation. Police describe Broussard as a white woman who's 5 foot 3 inches tall, 150 pounds. She has long, dark hair with highlights. If you have any information regarding their whereabouts, you are urged to call police. Immediately, this case took the media by storm. Many parallels were drawn between Heidi and the horrific murders carried out by Chris Watts, who had been convicted of murdering his wife and three children in 2018. Unfortunately, Shane bore a significant amount of scrutiny during this time, with many, many people on social media claiming he was guilty. After a few days with little headway in the case, the Austin Police Department brought in the FBI to assist with its investigation. They were able to determine from witnesses that Heidi had returned the morning that she disappeared shortly after dropping her son off, but no one saw her leave the building after that. Her phone had been turned off since her disappearance, and the last time it had pinged was at the apartment. Both Shane and Heidi's mother stated that there was no way Heidi had left voluntarily. They said in this statement, She wouldn't leave, not without an ID, all of her cash in her purse, her purse is here, her car is here, and she's a talker. She loves to talk. She loves her friends, she loves her family, and she would tell somebody and all of her friends don't know. Her mother went on to say this, It's only her and the baby and the cell phone and her keys that are missing, and that's it. Both Heidi's mother and Shane adamantly stated she never would have left her son behind. As the investigation progressed, a witness from Heidi and Shane's apartment complex came forward. They stated that on the morning of Heidi's disappearance, they had seen her talking outside of the building with a woman. They said that they saw the baby was with them, and that they watched as Heidi got into the vehicle parked outside the building, and that woman drove off with Heidi and the baby in the vehicle. Officers showed the witnesses a lineup of known people in Heidi's life, and the witness pointed out Heidi's best friend, Megan Faramuska. Heidi and Megan had been friends since they were teenagers and had met at church camp. Megan had been present at the birth of both Heidi's children and had even stayed at their apartment to help out after Margot's birth. Megan even had a key to their apartment. Officers continued their investigation and were able to confirm that Megan had seen Heidi that morning of her disappearance with surveillance and tracking where her phone had pinged on December 12th. Megan lived in Houston, Texas, 162 miles away from Austin. Texas Rangers were dispatched to check out the home, and once there, they sent up a helicopter to get aerial surveillance and noticed that a vehicle registered to Megan was parked in the backyard of the home. 
It was noted as odd as it wasn't like a driveway or some sort of parking spot in the backyard. It was just like a normal home backyard and the vehicle was like parked on the grass. It looked more like they were trying to conceal the vehicle rather than it being a practical place to park it. Texas Rangers were watching the house and saw a man leave the residence. They followed him to a local Target. They approached him and asked who he was. He revealed that he was Megan's ex-boyfriend. The couple had separated months prior but had continued to live together when he was told that Megan was pregnant. Officers asked about the pregnancy and noted its close proximity to Heidi's pregnancy. They asked about the birth and he said it had taken place while he was out of town and she had given birth to a girl that she named Luna May. They showed this man a photo of Margo, who confirmed looked exactly like Luna May. Law enforcement was allowed into the home by Megan's ex-boyfriend. When they entered, they spoke to Megan, who couldn't recall where she'd given birth. She couldn't show officers any sort of records that matched with Luna May, and officers found that incredibly suspicious. On December 19th, Megan Faramuska was arrested, and the baby was taken from the home and put into child protection until a DNA test could be conducted. DNA for the baby was confirmed to be Margot, and she was returned to her father's care. During a search of the home, officers found several suspicious internet searches on a device. Google searches for reasons for Amber Alert, Amber Alert in Austin, and 162 searches for Heidi Broussard, starting from December 12th. Officers also searched the vehicle that was in the backyard, and there they made the devastating discovery. Heidi's body was found in the trunk of the vehicle. This all began back on December 12th, when 33-year-old uh, Heidi Broussard and infant daughter, two-week-old baby Margot Casey, were last seen uh, as they dropped off their sibling and their uh, son at school, and we have been investigating their disappearance since that time. On Tuesday, APD Detective Harries gave a very thorough briefing to the media on what had been developed at that point through the investigation, and there's a lot that has happened since that time, most notably the events that took place out in the Houston and Harris County area overnight and into the early morning hours today. What we will confirm at this point is that we did recover an infant female child that we do believe at this time is Margot. However, we are awaiting the results of DNA testing to confirm that identity, and that testing may take us between 48 and 72 hours to get that confirmation. Additionally, we recovered the body of an adult female. We do believe that this is Ms. Broussard, However, again, we are awaiting the results of the autopsy to confirm her identity. A week after Heidi and Margot's abduction, there were now some answers, but more questions remained. It appeared that Faramuska had premeditated this attack for months, maybe even years before she carried it out. When Heidi revealed to friends that she was pregnant, that was when Megan announced that she was also pregnant and had the same due date. Heidi had made several statements to friends and Shane after Margot's birth that Megan had been possessive over the newborn. But all these red flags had been just that. Red flags concerning behavior. No one thought Megan was capable of this kind of violence. Heidi loved Megan. I mean, like, they had a great relationship. Like. I went over in my head about a thousand times, like, I should have been there, I should have noticed something. She was a, she was a friend, you know? Like, you would not suspect this at all. In January 2020, she was charged with capital murder, tampering with a corpse, and two counts of kidnapping. An autopsy revealed that Heidi had been strangled to death, and the murder weapon was alleged to have been a dog leash. Faramuska's trial has been delayed several times due to COVID, but she has been in the Travis County Jail awaiting trial since her arrest in 2020. She is being held on a $1.6 million bond. If convicted, she could face the death penalty.
In March of this year, she had her first court hearing and her defense mentioned to remove evidence collected from the day she was arrested. They argue that law enforcement didn't have a warrant to enter the home and Texas Rangers defended their actions saying there was a young child who had reason to believe to have been kidnapped. There had been a strong smell of decomposition at the property and had acted accordingly with a suspect who was capable of murder and kidnapping. They stated that when they saw the baby, she appeared to have jaundice, and for that reason, they couldn't wait for a search warrant. They also had permission from the ex-boyfriend to enter the property, who was also on the lease as a tenant. They even have him on body cam saying, She is not my child. Are you serious? Go get that baby. What are y'all waiting for, man? Texas Rangers arrived at the property at 1 p.m. and the search warrant wasn't approved until 8.30 p.m. Veramuska's attorneys are trying to get any evidence, testimony, and anything else collected before 8.30 p.m. thrown out of the trial. The state cited three exceptions justifying the search and seizure of the home at the time. One, law enforcement isn't required to show probable cause when action is immediately necessary to protect human life. Two, there was an objective standard of reasonableness to enter given the facts and circumstances of the case. And three, consent was given by someone authorized to provide consent, allowing Texas Rangers to enter the home without a warrant. And Texas Rangers also stated that once the baby was removed and in safety, they made everyone exit the home, conducted only a safety sweep, and waited until the warrant arrived. Only then did they open the vehicle, which they had already determined to be the source of the smell. They stated that they only immediately entered the home to preserve evidence and get the baby to safety. It does appear that the trial is still set to go forward. At this point in time, there hasn't been a trial date set, just a few smaller court proceedings just to get both sides ready for court. There is also still an option for a plea bargain or an admission of guilt, which may mean that no trial goes forward. We will just have to wait and see, and I will keep an eye on the situation and update when there's something new. Well, that is it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this content and what I do over here, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next upload. If you can give a like if you enjoyed the content, that would be much appreciated as it helps the channel to grow. We also have Patreon if you want to get more behind the scene content as well as exclusive content or just support the channel. In the description box of this video, you will also find links to all my socials. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.